I'm now going to talk about the new features in the DAW plugin. The DAW plugin is included with any purchase of Ban in a Box and allows you to use many of the great features of Ban in a Box right in your favorite DAW, such as Cakewalk, Reaper, Pro Tools, Personas, and many more. Now, the main point of the plugin is, of course, to generate backing tracks. And I will, of course, be demonstrating this along with the great new features in the plugin. But the plugin has great uses even without generating tracks. It's becoming more and more common for people to record remotely. For example, if you're a bass player, someone might send you just a mix of a guitar and a vocal part and ask you to record a bass part to go along with it. And what they'll be expecting back is just an audio file of your bass part alone, but one that's perfectly lined up with the tracks they sent you, which they could then just drop into their own DAW and have it be perfectly synced up. And the Band in a Box main program used in conjunction with the DAW plugin provides excellent tools to help with this kind of recording. In the previous video, we saw just such an example of a song like this, Down by the Sally Gardens, was just vocals and guitar, it wasn't recorded to a click track, and that's exactly the type of thing someone might send you and say, hey, can you add a bass part to this for me? Well, after I went through that process, I of course saved the Band in a Box song file and can open it here in the plugin in Reaper. Now, right away, there are some new features that I'm very excited about. In addition to the view from the previous versions of the plugin, tracks and chords, we also have two new views, track table and chord sheet. I really love this because for me, occasionally I want to be able to access both of them at the same time, but mostly I'm either working on tracks or I'm working on or viewing chords. For me, it's rarely both. In the chord sheet, we can see that there are tempo changes at every bar in the file. And I'm gonna want that to also be the case in the DAW. There's another new feature that allows you to drag a MIDI file that just contains a tempo map into the DAW, where the tempo can be imported into the session. And it can also contain markers indicating the chords, as well as options for other items as well. It's kind of a hidden feature, so you need to know how to do it. And that's to hold Shift and drag from the main chord chart into the DAW. I'll import the MIDI map, but I don't want to import the markers because in Reaper, the markers will actually display right in the MIDI file, and I find that more useful. And here it's given me the chords for the file, and it's put in a count in, which is great for me because I need to know exactly when to start, but I don't want the metronome on for the whole recording because I'd prefer to just be playing along with the guitar and vocals. That MIDI file is customizable in preferences, with options for an entire click track, not just the count in, and even block chords in the MIDI file. But the settings I used here are perfect for what I need. Although I do need to put a synth on that track so I actually hear the count in. I'm now going to go to the track table. And like I said, right now I'm not going to generate any backing tracks. I will get to that, I promise. But for now I'm simply going to use Band in a Box as a chord chart for my own recording. But of course I need the WAV file that's associated with the Band in a Box file. I'll play a little bit. And you can see that the chords in that MIDI file are displaying correctly in sync with the audio. And I'm almost ready to record. I've got two mics set up for recording my bass, one that's positioned at the sound hole, the other that's recording at the fretboard. So I need to set up two new tracks. One recording input one, and the other recording input two. I'll label the tracks. Acoustic bass, sound hole. And acoustic bass, fretboard. I'll now put the view back to chord sheet. I'll arm the tracks to record and I'll start recording.
So now one final thing. When you open audio in Ban in a Box and start to use the audio chord wizard, Ban in a Box pads the beginning of the file so that it matches the count in. This is great for here and made the track line up with the grid both in Ban in a Box and Reaper. But the producer is probably going to want my bass parts to line up with the actual file he sent me. That's easy enough to do now. I can just bring that original MP3 into here. Then I can slide it around so that it matches. And now I know that when I render out these two bass stems for the producer, the starting point should be here. So now I'm going to generate some tracks to also use in here. First of all, I'm going to name the song here. And I'm going to go to the track table. And rather than picking a style, I'd like to find some real tracks and real drums a la carte that might be cool in this song. I'd like to experiment with this being a bit of a folk electronic hybrid, so there are some new hip-hop minimal real drums that I'd like to try out. But also I'd like to add to the folky side of the song, so there are new cajon reel drums. With the hip-hop minimal electronic drum style, there were also accompanying reel tracks, so I'd like to add a synth pad as well. And there are new vibes reel tracks available. In the past we've had jazz vibes, but never had straight ahead pop vibes. So these are extremely useful new reel tracks. Before I generate, I'm going to want the file names here to be more user-friendly than the file names we've had in the past. So I'm going to go into Preferences, Rendering, Simplify File Names. Now there's a new option to have the plugin generate all ungenerated tracks. Now currently I don't want to do that because I don't want to generate the style tracks. But if, for example, you had some tracks generated and some not, this would only regenerate the ungenerated ones. But what I want now is all extra tracks. And another new feature is faster rendering. And the generation of all those tracks took just under 30 seconds. And now I can drag all of these tracks into the DAW, where I can play them now and mix them together. And there are other exciting new features in the DAW plugin. You can now change audio output channels for an audio track using the plus button on the track table. And you can do the same for MIDI channels. The copy paste to text feature that we saw earlier in the video means that you can now copy chords back and forth between the plugin and the main program. For example, I'll highlight all of this and use Control C to copy it. And then in Banana Box, I'll go Paste Special from Clipboard Text. And the reverse is true. I'll go Control C to copy in Banana Box, and Control V to paste in the plugin. You can also copy whole songs. If we're in this dialog and I select whole song and copy that to the clipboard, then if I go Control Shift V in the plugin, not only the chords, but the entire song has been copied here. The plugin can now display two chord types at once in the chord sheet. For example, you could have standard notation and Nashville notation at the same time. There are new options in the preferences. You can now set the action to perform when starting a new session. For example, you can have it start with the most recent style, or the default style, or you can select a style. You can also pick your own default style that you want. There are also new options for highlighting bars from the DAW. Never, always, or only during playback, so it won't highlight the bars when you're just doing editing in the DAW. And there are new options to render flat, dry, and center, meaning that the tracks that you'll then drag into the DAW are in a state exactly like they would be if you just recorded them directly into the DAW. We hope you enjoy all of the amazing new features in Banana Box 2021 for Windows and the Banana Box DAW plugin. Thanks for watching and have fun!